Santa Fe, New Mexico is the location of the Institute of American Indian Arts, or IAIA. It is a unique college that was founded in 1963. Its focus on Indigenous stories, history, and future of Indigenous people by Indigenous people of North America. The entire city pays homage to Indigenous arts and history at every turn. Students come from approximately 90 different Indigenous nations throughout North America, but also welcome students from places like Japan. Felipe Colon, who is the Dean of IAIA, arranged for our personal tour on December 6, 2021. Anthony Dieter from Pipicacy's Cree Nation is the Professor of Media Arts. He is the only Indigenous expert in the fields of CGI animation, motion capture, and digital media in the U.S. at IAIA. His students are recruited by companies such as Disney, Pixar, and NBC. This college also offers high-flex online courses, hybrid classes, and has potential for online high school courses. Other courses such as creative writing, script writing, gaming, and many more are available at IAIA. We're at a good place in our nation right now to, for us to explore possibilities, which maybe weren't there before. And then uh, uh, I, I encourage her to come down for a tour when she had a chance. Of course, COVID complicating everything. I said, well, I'll get her down here, get a tour, and then we can talk, and then I'll introduce you to the dean, and here we are. So, thank you. And, you know, we, we share the same, of course, higher education, education in general, has been on sort of the steady trend for increasing virtual and distance learning. Yeah. Uh, but of course, the pandemic has greatly accelerated that. And I'm sure, as Anthony has shared, you know, we're somewhat fortunate as an institution that we've actually been doing distance learning for over a decade. Yeah. So we have a number of certificate programs and quite a few classes, especially within our museum studies, art history, gen ed courses that have been developed over the years to be online. But of course, in spring 2020, we basically had to make the change to everything yeah. <laughs> online. Wow. We're really fortunate, again, because really of our history as an institution with our delivery of distance learning, that we've been given a, a particularly unique amount of leeway, as you could say, yeah. by the Higher Learning Commission, which is our primary accreditation body, to deliver basically anything and everything that we think we can do online in an online format, not just during the pandemic, but in perpetuity. And so what we're really examining as an institution now is what do we want to do and what do we feel is possible to do and where can we sort of take from the lessons of the last decade and in particular, in this instance, from the models of some of our graduate programs to potentially develop what we might consider to be in the future things like low residency, BFA, AFA certificate programs, the greatest freedom for our students to keep their connections with their home place and with their families, with their communities, with their cultures. We don't want to replicate sort of the, the systems of the past where it was all about in order to get an education, you had to leave home. And you had to sort of make that really what oftentimes amounted to be sort of a permanent break with your community and your culture. We don't want to be a place that, that perpetuates that. We want to be a place that instead keeps our students very much connected to their community, to their culture, keeps them thinking about how what they learn here with us and the skills and the education they develop can actually be of direct benefit to their communities. So we're, we're kind of, you know, although the pandemic's been incredibly hard in many ways, it's really spurred HLC, it's spurred us to some degree to say, okay, let's really examine who we are as an institution, what our values are and what we intend to do with what we are you know, teaching and how that benefits an indigenous community and how do we now reshape our curriculum, our delivery, you know, even our whole structure as an institution to really not just sort of pay lip service to that, but to really put it into practice. Professor Dieter has been incredibly instrumental in helping to build up our cinematic arts, gaming, digital arts program to be able to do really immersive, incredibly interactive online and what we're calling now high flex, so a mix of in-person online learning. Yeah. It's really setting the stage not only of course for what we do as an institution, but really serving as a model for what potentially other institutions, indigenous or not, can yeah. do. And we're really sort of, our, myself, our, our president, Dr. Martin, our board, are really excited at the prospect that you know the future of higher education may be informed by the structures and the values of indigenous 
people. That, you know, in this era where the rest of the world is starting to look back towards their community, giving to their community, being a part of their community, um, and not necessarily building a life that is apart from their home, their culture, that we're really the people. Indigenous people are the people to really showcase that. Because it's a thing we've been struggling for for you know, two centuries now. It's an exciting time in many ways. So we're really looking forward to seeing how communities also come to us and say, you know, this is what we need and this is really what we'd like. You know, lining up potentially in the future, even our semesters with things like the community, you know, annual calendars and schedules. We know that, you know, 17 weeks. So how do we as an institution also build our classes in a way that allows the students that cultural continuity and connection throughout the year? There's a lot of that that we are kind of on the verge of really evaluating and, and designing into what we do. You know, we, we tend to be both sort of the substance and the flash. You know, when we go into something, we go into it wholeheartedly. We go into it, you know, eyes open that, you know, we understand the way that things need to be presented, the way that things need to be showcased in order to ensure that, you know, those funders are happy, we're happy, the students are happy, the community is happy, you know, it's part of a whole package. We try to sort of look back at the lessons of our ancestors and say, you know, if we're not building it out for multiple generations in the future, we're not putting enough time, effort, and work into it. It needs to be something that is sustainable and something that continues to evolve. It needs to be something that actually has long-term thought-through benefits. So. And I brought that up in the dome when I was saying, you know, since I've been here, I haven't seen industry meet our school at quite the pace it is now. It's amazing who's yeah. here. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was telling them about talking Pixar last week and R.R. Uh, R. Martin's got a scholarship here. And there's some incredible opportunities for these students here. Mm -hmm. We, of course, we've been the leader in contemporary art and art education for almost 60 years now. But, you know, especially in the turn of the 21st century, we've seen a lot of other institutions get very involved in it. And I believe the Aussies in particular was, she developed this actually for an exhibition at NMAI, I think it was in 2005, 2006, one of their premier exhibitions. First time that Smithsonian National Museum had ever done a truly contemporary art form show. Um, and we actually, it was her, and I think we probably had close to 10 other students from our programs here that contributed to that same show. You know, it's really about about finding the ways, you know, as we do in sort of contemporary life, to express our culture, our history, our trauma, our pride, all of those things in a medium that speaks to the contemporary people that we are. And certainly, you know, again, being Pueblo, we kind of have this persona out in the world about, you know, the traditionality of our communities and, you know, how the dances are done the same time every year as they have been for a you know, thousand years, how the communities look the same, the languages are preserved. But, uh, you know, we and, and certainly the governors from my tribe have always really been forward looking as well to say, that's great. We're going to preserve the past, but we're also going to find a way to perpetuate it. And in order to perpetuate your culture and your history, you have to be able to relate it to your contemporary life. You have to be able to, you know, design your contemporary life in a way that is respectful and honoring and continuing a tradition, but also taking in all of those new things, yeah. which was common to our ancestors too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good time for our people to be looking at this now. That's right. I think they're ready. I think the youth out there are ready for something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we always like to think, you know, not just different, but, you know, a place where they will be welcomed on their own terms. So yeah. we're not asking them to become somebody else when they step on campus, but instead to, you know, find the way to celebrate who they are through the things that they learn here and to take those things back to their community, yeah. take those lessons, become those future leaders in art, in culture, yeah. in history, and through that help to again perpetuate the indigenous cultures and the life way. The last few years in particular, Swaya Indian Market has been sort of a mix of virtual and in person, but you know, this year I think they're planning for pretty much be in, in person. person. Huh? They're going for in person all out. So yeah. it would be an amazing time to be here. And we'll actually be in session also by that point in the semester. So if you'd like to sit in on a class, you know, a virtual class, an in-person class, um, you know, we'd be happy to welcome you in uh, for that as well. For more information, go to iaia.edu.